Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. And I, since I've already completed the housekeeping instructions, I'll pass on the floor to Terry. Terry, once you're done with your coffee, you're most welcome to start. Oh, I'm, Thank you. I, I'll probably be drinking the coffee a little bit as I go. It uh, helps keep <laughs> my, my voice, voice alive. So <clears throat> anyway, welcome. Uh, uh, good, good evening to you. Um, it's morning here, um, 11 a.m., but uh, a little later for you. So anyway, my name is Terry Bose, and uh, I'll be the instructor for this um, safety certification course. And I do hold the certified safety professional. I've worked in safety for, for many years, and I've worked in safety in a lot of different environments. Um, I was... A, um, a safety officer for ADCO in, down in Abu Dhabi for three years, worked in the field, worked at, at Bob Field for any of those that you know it, uh, their largest field. I think we had 700 oil wells, 400 gas wells. Um, and so we had a pretty big operation there. I think we had, I supervised around uh, 30 firefighters and about 20 um, safety officers. And we did all kinds of things. Uh, we did the permit to work things. We, we did um, emergency response as well, hazmat. Um, we did all kinds of um, hazard analysis, TRAs, all those things. Um, also, I worked as a safety officer in emergency response as a uh, firefighter for over 20 years. And then recently, I spent a couple of years uh, doing some emergency response in the nuclear industry in New Mexico, here in the US, working at a uranium enrichment facility. So I've had a lot of, I got a, a very background. I've also actually done some, some safety and construction. So I've got a, a pretty wide uh, background. For seven years before I got into emergency response and safety, I was a um, school teacher. I taught science and physical education and health. So when I got into emergency response, that's how I got into this um, training. Uh, they they saw that I had the background and they 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 utilized that very quickly. So um, I've got a, a bachelor's degree in education. <clears throat> I've also got an associate's degree in emergency management, uh, about 150 FEMA certifications, and uh, also I'm working on a master's degree in business administration and project management. I've been a project manager within um, construction and within emergency management field for several years. So that, that's a little bit about me. It's, um, Kind of boring, but I do want you to understand that I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to, first of all, the safety and also training, and then um, additionally test taking. My my education background has really helped me out in becoming um, really one of the, the world's foremost um, exam prep instructors. I've instructed a lot of safety personnel and a lot of fire protection personnel in preparing for their exams. Uh, and I've done this with a very high rate of success. Um, we'll talk about the, the typical pass fail rates a little bit later and uh, we'll also compare that to what I've been able to accomplish um, with the NFPA Certified Fire Protection Specialist exam and the Board of Certified Safety. Both of those two organizations have difficult exams to pass and so um, I've been doing this <clears throat> training for these for quite a while and uh, so uh, if if you're going to pass that exam you're going to need a few skills and I can really help you with those so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and turn my screen sharing on there's a few th things that I want to go through um, before we get started so we're going to
Maybe look at this. Let's get this. All righty. And here we go. All right. Um, if you can't see this screen, let me know. Or you can type a note while I'm uh, monitoring those chats as well. So this, again, a little bit about me. The one thing I didn't mention, I do a lot of teaching for the United States Fire Administration's National Fire Academy in Washington, D.C., as well as with FEMA. Um, at their Emergency Management Institute, I actually teach train the trainer courses, so I train other instructors, and then I've also recently been added as an NFPA um, instructor as well. I'll be teaching several different NFPA courses. So think about this for a minute, um, because becoming a CSP may sound difficult if you look at the long list of uh, the requirements, but it's really, it's not as difficult as you think, and it's not as convoluted. You really have to ask yourself just a few things. Number one, do you have a university bachelor's degree? That is um, absolutely mandatory. Um, there's no waivers for that. There's no substitutions. Um, you do have to show a diploma from an accredited university. Do you, have you worked for four years with at least 50% of your duties being related to safety? And uh, as a part of the um, application, you'll have to fill out where you've worked, what your job title was, and how many hours you typically spent um, in, in safety during your, your, your average work day. And then finally, you have to ask, do you want to forward your career with the highest um, value safety certification in the world? Um, the, the CSP is the, the one certification that safety officers um, really need to forward their careers that the, these HR people will look at that and they understand that if you've got that designation um, behind your name, that, that you've put your time in, that you've got both the training and the experience to be a, a highly successful safety professional. Okay. Um, when we get started on the classes, a couple of things <clears throat> here administratively, we'll go over that um, again later. The, the course that, that I teach um, uses three basic platforms they're all very simple obviously if you're you're here today you already understand how to use zoom that's going to be our main um, way of contact um, is through zoom uh, between zoom meetings uh, we will you'll still be able to um, contact me either through email or also through whatsapp and both of those um, will be a part of your registration materials that you get when you register for the course. Um, also use Canvas. Canvas is a learning management system. It's uh, one of the most respected systems <clears throat> in the world. Kyle. Then we will interact during courses with um, an app called Poll Everywhere. Very quick and easy to download and to use um, hopefully we'll be able to, to get that. I wanted um, everyone to download that today to see how easy it is and we'll utilize that later in today's webinar. So Zoom, everybody understands Zoom again. I'm not going to beleaguer that point. Um, Canvas, there's a lot of things that, we'll, that we will use Canvas for. You will sign up. It's a free account um, on the web and you will get all your course documents, if I have a handout, some information, and I have numerous handouts for each of the um, categories that we're going to talk about during the, the course, 
we, we'll talk about science, we'll talk about training, we'll talk about ethics. All of these things have uh, project managers. All of these things have a lot of documents to go with and to back up that information that not only will you be learning during these um, courses, but you will be able to review these documents between courses um, to, to get a little bit of an understanding. There are gonna be um, discussions between students that takes place um, on Canvas where you will make a post, you'll answer a question, and then you will discuss other um, students' stance and how you may agree or disagree or add to what they've said. Um, these discussions will also help you, and you can you can use these discussions beyond just the, the questions that are asked. Maybe there was a part of the, the lecture one, one day that you felt you didn't grasp fully. You can, you can discuss that with your, your fellow students, and you can say, hey, put a post out there. What do you guys feel about this? I didn't quite maybe feel like I grasped the, the concept. And so that's a, that's a really good um, part of Canvas that we can use that you can, you can talk back and forth with the, um, the other students. All of the assignments that you have, there'll be typically one assignment a week. And I'm not talking about something that's gonna take you four hours. I'm talking about something that's gonna take you 15 or 20 minutes, but it's well worth it because it's really, these assignments will um, cement your learning and make it so that it sticks with you. And not only will you keep it for the, the test, but hopefully you'll keep it for your entire career. I know that our, our number one goal is to pass the test and get certification, but the, the, the amount of time that you're gonna be um, putting into this, you're gonna get more than passing the test. You're gonna get a much deeper understanding of your profession as a safety officer, safety engineer. And so the, the, the real hope is that you will be certified and you will be um, a much more knowledgeable safety professional. Um, and so these assignments will, will uh, help, help you take that learning and make it something rather than just that you use to pass a quiz or pass a certification, something that you use in your, your daily lives and keep with you for a long time. Um, <clears throat> there are also all of the quizzes and all of the exams. There are two exams <clears throat> and there's a quiz after um, each section. So those are all in there. And the good thing about that, having them that way is that they're all um, stored. You can always go back and access them, see which ones you got right, which ones you got wrong, take them again and um, learn, not only, you know, find out, okay, I did 80% on this unit, that's good, but what did I miss? And you can study that and improve that as well. Um, and then finally, a poll everywhere. That's good. a more instant thing where I'll ask questions. You will input them onto your device. You can use uh, a desktop, a laptop, a tablet, or a mobile phone, any of those, and <clears throat> answer those questions right away and get feedback right away. Both you will get feedback and myself will get feedback to see how we're doing and where we're at. So what I want to do right now, for those of you that, uh, that have your, your devices right there, um, I think it's probably easier on the phone, even if you're on a, a, a laptop, um, to download this. Um, you can go into any uh, of the app stores, and um, whether it's the... Um, the, the Google Play Store, the Android, or the um, Apple Store, and download the Poll Everywhere app. If you're on a computer, you don't have to download anything. You can go directly to pollev.com, and they'll ask, ask you to put in my account information, and you can do that, and then you'll be able to respond to activities. Um, 
<clears throat> you can also do it by text. And that information is there on the screen as well. Um, but the easiest and the best way is to go into one of the app stores, download the poll everywhere app, and uh, then it'll <clears throat> ask you to type in something. You type in um, Terry Bowes 261, and then anytime one of the polls pops up during the course, it'll come up on your phone and you'll be able to interact with it that way. <clears throat> I'm going to come over here and look at, at my computer. What I would like would be for everyone to, uh, if, if you uh, are able to log on to the web or download this, um, give us a, a thumbs up in the comments. And um, Malvon, if you'll let me know when we got just about everyone with thumbs up. Um, I'll, I'll keep moving. So I'm going to go ahead and keep moving anyway, but Malvon, if you'll let me know, um, there are some questions we're going to ask a little later here. Sure, Terry, go ahead. So <clears throat> while everyone's doing that, I want to talk a little bit about the, the board of um, certified safety professionals, um, the most highly respected safety association in the world. They do offer more than just the CSP, but the CSP is the, the main, um, the highest level of certification that they have. Um, and there's a couple of things that being a CSP can do for you. Number one, if you're actively looking for work, um, it, it sends a really good message to hiring officials as to where you're at in your career. Um, if you have a position, it can help you if you want to move into a supervisory or a management level position. Um, again, it, if, you, if you look at the, um, some of the brochures and so forth, it can seem, it can seem rather uh, lengthy. It's really not. The first thing you do is that you apply to the um, the BCSP and with your diploma and your work information. Okay, they will look at that if you have the degree and you've worked for four years as a safety professional, they will seat you for the exam. They'll send you a, a letter saying that you can take the exam. You have one year from that point to register with Pearson View and to take the exam. After that time, after you've registered, you can prepare for the exam and then you take it. And that's where we come in, number three, preparing for the exam. Um, most of the people that have not been successful at passing the exam said the problem was they didn't prepare enough. Uh, I studied a lot of hours um, for that exam myself. There are two tracks to certification, and unlike any other course that I've ever seen, this course uh, offers you both. <clears throat> so, you, um, you meet the work and the experience. Let's say you have your bachelor's degree and you worked at least four years in the safety profession, which I'm sure most of you probably have. Okay. Sorry, Terry, can, can I interrupt? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just wondering, regarding the poll, uh, would you like them to do it right now? Because then they wouldn't be able to follow you. If they're trying to download, it takes, it takes a little time. Uh, can we just type the question and get them to answer? Would that be okay with you? Um, <clears throat> we can. Like I said, it, it really only takes about... 30 seconds on a, on a mobile device. So, okay. but uh, yeah, and, and it's not anything mandatory. We can go through the questions regardless of whether or not um, yes. people have yes. downloaded these. I think, uh, I think some of them are using the office computers and they may not have the access. Sure. Okay. All right, sure. Thanks, Terry. Sure. And so, and I'll, I'll put, you'll be able to see how it works on the screen and that's all I wanted to demonstrate. So, 
if you have your degree and you have your experience, um, then you're going to be in one track. Perhaps, and then the next thing you need to have is one of the 13 certifications. So you've got your degree, you've got your experience, and you have to have one previous certification. There's a list of 13, including the Associate Safety Professional or ASP. If you have one of those, then you're, you're going down one path. The other path is for those people who do not have one of those certifications, whether it's the NEBOSH or the ASP or the Philippine test. There, again, there's several of those. If you don't have one of those, you can still become a CSP. There's just one additional step. So if you have one of those 13, then you, you're ready to um, apply and start taking the course to study for the test. <clears throat> if you do not, and then of course, after that, you take the test. If you do not, you can still take the course and study for the test. First, you take the ASP test. As soon as you pass that course, you're eligible to immediately take the CSP. So it's just one additional test that you have to take. If you don't hold one of those 13, and um, our course covers all of the ASP and CSP. So they're not very different. What they are is that the CSP is all of those things in the ASP plus uh, a, about 10% more information. So we cover those. So when, when you're done with our course, you will be prepared for the CSP which is the harder of the two exams by about 10%. So what you do is you take the ASB, pass that, then you apply for the CSB and pass that. So it's just really one, one additional step in there that you have to take that ASB test for those who don't have the one of the 13 certifications. Okay. So the application, going online at the BCSP and filling it out. They do not take paper applications anymore. It has to be online. The form will direct you to submit certain things. Um, they may, there will be a diploma. There's a uh, forms to document your work experience and they may ask you for some transcripts. Okay. The application includes uh, basically a survey of the jobs that you've held and how many hours on average that you've worked in safety and then the fee to have your application reviewed and processed. Once you're accepted, again, you get that letter and you schedule your test with Pearson View. What I suggest is that you schedule, you look at where the where you're in and how you're going to train, and then you schedule your test one or two months after that, up to one to two months after that. So that gives yourself an opportunity to take a study course and study and prepare yourself for that test. Of course, the next Terry, part is... Uh, yes. Sorry, Terry, uh, can I ask a question, please? Uh, I think please. this is a question which is running on many people's minds. Regarding the certificates, because there, were, uh, there was always a confusion. Now, the general practice is they would like the certificates to be attested by an independent body and then sent to BCSP. Has this changed? To, uh, so that means don't I need to attest these certificates? I, there's nothing in the education process that says they have to be attested. I see. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So you just, and most, and the reason being is that it, it's different than perhaps even five or 10 years ago. Each one of these certifying bodies now has an, an online process where you can go in 
and type in a person's name and it will tell you whether they've got that certificate or not, including the um, CSP. Once you become certified as a CSP, you will be in their online directory and anyone, let's say that you want to put in a, a job application um, with a, a company, they can go in and they'll say, oh, he's, he's CSP, let's look him up. And they'll say, yes, oh, CSP, um, right there on the website. You'll be in the directory. And so I think that's the, the impetus behind no longer having these attested. Okay. Terry, one other question. Uh, one of the participants would like to see the list of certificates, uh, certifications approved by, for ASP and CSP. Okay, I can pull that up here in just a minute. Sure, thank you. Okay. Um, so the exam is 200 questions, and for the most part, they're multiple choice A, B, C, and D. Some of them have... Um, six choices rather than four, but not very many. Um, I will say this, there aren't a lot of questions where there's only one answer that's correct. Quite often there may be more than one that's correct and they may ask you which is the best answer. So don't always think that you can just go through and say, oh, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this must be the right answer. Sometimes there might be two that aren't correct two that are correct, but one may be better than the other. Um, the, the pass rate of the, um, the CSP is approximately, and you'll get different um, depending on when, when you look and, and where you look, but around 50% of the people pass and about 50% do not on the first attempt. Now, if you don't pass, it doesn't mean you're done. That means that you can go back and restudy. And if you if you take the test and don't pass, not only will they tell you to pass, they will give you all of the questions that you missed and the answers so that you can study uh, maybe in an area that you were had a weakness in. Um, now the course that I teach does that ahead of time. So we will um, not only cover all the information, but you'll be tested on it. You'll learn your strengths and weaknesses and you and I will personally um, get together twice for 30 minute coaching sessions um, before you go on. And at the end of the course, I will give you an individual study plan. So um, then we'll, this will be an outline of what I think you need to study and all of the information that will lead you through finishing up after um, the 40 plus hours that we've put in to the online uh, portion. <clears throat> it's very important that you have a plan anytime you undertake something of this magnitude, whether it be um, taking the EOSH, taking the NFPA certified fire protection specialist, or taking the CSP. You need to have a plan and you need to follow a plan. Um, part of that <clears throat> will be learning your strengths and weaknesses. Um, this test covers a lot of ground. Um, no safety professional knows everything, okay? The, the person, whoever's got the highest forever on the CSP test did not get a 100. Nobody knows everything. Um, so you have to know which areas are you strong in, which ones are you weak in. People who have worked in construction will have certain strengths. People who have worked in safety will have certain strengths. People who have, uh, who have worked in industry will have certain strengths. People who have worked in oil and gas will have certain strengths. Um, and even, let's say you work safety in oil and gas. You, if you worked in a desk position, you will have different strengths and weaknesses than someone that worked in the field. Okay, so um, what you have to do is identify those and, and take advantage of your strengths to make sure that you get all the questions and you get them fast so that you have more time for the ones that are in your weakness. And, and when we identify your weaknesses, we work very hard to build those up 
so that they don't hold you back. Um, it's also very important to understand test strategies. I can't stress this enough. Um, on both this and the, the um, NFPA certification test, you have to understand that test and you have to understand the strategies of questions and finding out how to, to find that answer based on what they're asking. Um, this is a strength of mine because of my education background and uh, being a teacher, having developed curriculums for over 30 years and written hundreds of tests and written tens of thousands of test questions myself, I get this, I understand it. And um, when a student completes one of my exam prep classes, they understand test taking and test taking strategy. And this goes from understanding the words to look for in both questions and answers, as well as another very important part, time management. Um, this test, the time management, is not as important as some other tests because it's a very long period of time. They give you five hours to compete, to complete 200 questions. But if you think about it, five hours, that's only, um, that's only 300 minutes, okay, for 200 questions. But what we're going to do is we're going to work on your strength so much that you go through the questions that you know, you get them like that. So you may only take five or 10 seconds on a large number, let's say maybe 50 out of those 200. You get, that allows you all the rest of that time for the rest of the questions and maybe you know 100 of them, okay? That gives you a long period of time for the other half. So time management is, is extremely important as well. Um, this is a long test, so we, we won't work quite as much on that. Um, I have hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds of questions in my test banks for our practice exams. These are directly from BCSP. They're either questions that are supplemental, which means they're like the ones on the test. They may be retired which means that they were, they used to be test questions and they put them out just because if anyone has ever been able to steal a test, they don't want the same questions out there. So they're always running them um, new ones through. Does a retired, retired question doesn't mean that it's no longer, that information isn't correct or important. It just means that it's no longer on the test. So um, we will have practice um, questions during every session. We will have practice um, questions at the end of every session. There will be some between sessions as well. And then halfway through the course, we'll take a midterm exam. And then at the very end, we'll take a full exam. And I will analyze your answers to each of those so that I can provide you a um, <clears throat> individualized study plan at the end of the, um, the course. So I'm going to show a, a film here. Uh, Excuse this, me, Terry. Yes. Uh, Terry, we've got a couple of questions. Uh, could you take them? Okay. So before Absolutely. we move on. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Mike, uh, you've got a lot of questions. Do you want to ask them one by one or would you like me to read them out? Just uh, if you can read it. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, right. Sure, sure. I'll read them slowly. And if I make any mistake, just apologies, just correct me. The first question, are all questions multiple choice questions? And is there negative marking applic applicable? All 200 questions are going to be multiple choice. So sometimes there may, there's typically about 80 to 90% of them are A, B, C, and D. Sometimes there are A, B, C, D, E, and F. There will be six. And quite often, there may be four answers, A, B, C, and D. And then below that, there will be four more. And it will say A and B are correct. Or it may say A and C are correct. Or it may say all of them are correct. 
but there's always multiple choice. <clears throat> okay. Um, and anyway, we're going to show them some sample questions, isn't it, Terry? I think they will understand better when we show that slide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. The next one is the exam. What about the negative, exam. negative marking is there in the question? Is there any negative marking? Suppose question is wrong, whether we will be losing the marks or... Absolutely. There may be a question that says, out of the four terms below, which one does not describe uh, a safe practice during an excavation? So absolutely, they do have those. Okay. Uh, the next question from Prabhu, uh, he was asking for the exam questions, criteria and type. Well, the, the time you have five hours for uh, two hours. Sorry, uh, Terry, he was talking about the exam questions, criteria. Probably, I think uh, he's. Uh, Prabhu, are you asking about the nine domains? Prabhu, are you there? Yeah, Prabhu, yes, uh, nine domains. Yes. Nine domains. So, yes. okay. Uh, Terry would actually be going through those uh, domains. Am I right, Terry? Yes. And th those are also in um, the, the, the brochure. Did, did everyone receive a brochure? Uh, not yet, Terry. After the webinar, okay. we'll share the brochure with them. Yeah, that, and that brochure, not only does it list the nine domains, but it, there's some information there about that explains what's in each one. Okay. Uh, the next question, okay. All right. Um, the other question I already answered, the, uh, Mayank was asking whether it was an uh, open book or a closed book exam. I did tell him it's a closed book exam. It is a closed book. You only be allowed, when, when you come to a Pearson view, they have lockers. So anything you have, your phone, um, your wallet, all of that goes into the locker. Then you, you take the key and you can have that with you and you can have pencils. They will give you scrap paper and you can take a calculator, but the, it has to be on the approved list of calculators. There's an approved list. There's seven or eight of them. Um, and they're not all expensive. Some of the calculators are maybe like a hundred US, but the one that I bought for my test was eight, eight US dollars. So, and also if you don't have a calculator, there is a calculator in the test. So you can go to the, to the screen and pull up the calculator. Um, and you use the calculator in the test software. Um, I will say this about the calculators. You do have to understand the square and the square root functions. And we definitely will practice that so that when you go to the test, you are very confident that if you have to use a square root, you will understand how to do that with a calculator. Okay. Uh, can I move on to the next question, Terry? Yes, please. All right. And uh, there are some questions related to the fees the, which are chargeable by BCSP. Probably we can go um, when we reach the end of the program. Let's talk about the fees. Okay. okay. Um, there's one. Uh, some of the participants, they have a three-year degree from India. Uh, would that be accepted or is BCSP mandating a four-year degree? Um, if it is considered an equivalent to a bachelor's degree, um, there's no time frame that is on there as long as it's considered an equivalent. And again, I'm not involved in um, processing and approving at all with BCSP. Um, I, can, I, can, I do have a lot of connections with people there that do that. So if someone wants to email you or I, Malavan, um, that particular degree and the, um, the university that it came from, I can forward that to the BCSP and find out um, if it's on their approved list. Now, uh, Terry, when you say approved list, this is in addition to the eight uh, approved certifications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So All right. oh. they have, 
a list of accredited universities for every country. Um, and that's not really a BCSP list. That those lists come from those countries. So if India says that this program is equivalent to a bachelor's degree, they will be on their list. It's not something that BCSP created themselves. It's just something, it's a long list. There's thousands and thousands of universities across the globe that provide um, bachelor's degrees. And it doesn't have to be a bachelor's degree in safety. For example, my bachelor's degree is in education, but it, any bachelor's degree, if you have a bachelor's degree in sociology or mathematics, it will count. So hopefully okay. that answers your question there. Okay. Next question uh, from Muhammad Taki. Will this certificate be considered as master's degree certificate? Uh, Mohamed, uh, if you can just explain, what do you mean by this? Which certificate are you referring to? Mohamed Taki Imam? All right, uh, let me move on to the next question. So I uh, oh, yes, I'll, please. I'll, I'll quickly make an answer. If you're talking about the BCSP, and I think that maybe because they require uh, um, a bachelor's, that, that some people may think that it um, is equivalent to a master's, but it is not. So it's not equivalent to any type of a degree at all. It's just a certification. Um, so uh, if you have a bachelor's or a master's or a PhD, you qualify to um, through that portion. So, but no, the the, the um, CSP is not uh, considered a, a master's level certification. Um, Terry, I think I have a feeling that some of them they have a diploma and then they have a master's degree. Pro uh, I'm wondering whether he was trying to ask whether his master's degree would be accepted as a bachelor's degree. Oh, absolutely. Bachelor's, master's, anything bachelor's or above will be accepted, absolutely. Uh, that's very good. Uh, Nadim has the next question. Does this certificate cover all fields? Nadim, are you trying to ask whether the, if the bachelor's degree is, from, uh, is different from HSC? Is, is that your question, Nadim? Yes, sir. I'd like to know more about uh, uh, whether this certificate covers all the fields like commercial safety, construction, oil and gas, or specific to a particular field? No, it covers all industries, any safety professional. Um, so if you're a CSP, it you're not a CSP in oil and gas only or in construction only. If you're a CSP, you're a CSP for all. Uh, does it answer your question, Nadi? Yeah, it's okay, sir. But still, I have another question. What, Please. What is the validity of this certificate, sir? Validity. Because there are party certifications. I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear that. It broke up a little bit on my end. Sure. Uh, Nazim was this, asking. Uh, yeah, this please go ahead, is valid. Is it valid for a year or it's just uh, once for all? Or we have to renew it maybe like every year? Good question. So you have to renew it. it it's not a certificate for life. So it requires um, some ongoing, uh, what they call continued education, CE units. Um, so you have to renew it on, a, uh, I think it's every two years. I'd have to check again. It's either every one year or every two. All right, thanks. Okay. Uh, then uh, another question from uh, Murli. Uh, it's specific to one of the domains. Uh, do you want to take the question? Tell you what, why, why don't we do this? Because we've got a video here that might answer some of these questions. It's, it's okay. a short video, but it explains a lot. And then we'll go through some of the material. And then uh, it might, might be wise to move the questions to the end, just in case some of them get in. Okay, okay. Sure, Terry, please. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll 
play the video here. Again, it's not a long video, but it's, it, it's very good to, to help explain what the CSP is. And um, then we'll, we'll go on from there. CEO of the Board of Certified Safety Professionals. I am a certified safety professional myself, and I've held the CSP for over 20 years. I would like to address a few questions that are frequently asked by members of our LinkedIn group. Our hope is that by proactively addressing these commonly asked questions, it will help you to make your decision to move forward and certify yourself. As many certificates will tell you, becoming a BCSP certificate not only advances the profession, but it can advance career as well. Let's talk about the value of certification. Certification demonstrates competency in a given field of practice. It proves your value. The Board of Certified Safety Professionals certifications are peer-driven, psychometrically developed examinations, which ensures proficiency in knowledge and skills relevant to current safety practice. Certification shows colleagues, stakeholders, and employers that you have successfully demonstrated a level of competency. Many employers require or prefer certification for hiring or for promotion in the area of safety, health, and environmental practice. BCSP is the longest established continuous accredited certified body in the area of safety, health, and environmental practice. We have been in business since 1969 and currently certify over 27,000 credential holders involved in the safety, health, and environmental protection of the workforce. BCSP certifications are trademarked, available for nearly every level of safety practice, and most importantly, accredited by rigorous accreditation bodies. The CSP is accredited by two accreditation bodies, one of them international in scope. Not all certifications are equal. BCSP certifications are psychometrically developed, and the quality of our examinations is what leads to BCSP certification endorsed independent third parties. This is one of the reasons why we call them the gold standard of safety certification. BCSP's examinations are available via computer-based testing sites. We partner with a company named Pearson View to administer our examinations. Pearson View delivers millions of high stakes tests over a year across the globe for clients in the licensure, certification, academic admissions, regulatory and governmental testing service markets. It hosts the world's leading test center network with over 5,000 test centers in 175 countries, 230 of which are fully owned and operated by Pearson Professional Centers. Pearson Professional Centers utilize a patent-winning design, which was created specifically for high-stakes testing and offers a carefully controlled, consistent testing environment. Once a BCSP applicant receives their examination authorization letter from BCSP, they contact the Pearson View site of their choice directly for arranging a date and time to take the examination. Everyone has their own methodologies for studying for BCSP examinations. BCSP provides a blueprint of knowledge and skills covered in each examination, and these are available online at bcsp.org. Exams are not written with the intent of being tricky, so please read the items at face value and do not read into the questions or answers. BCSP does sell self-assessment examinations for each of our certifications. These are available by contacting BCSP and paying a nominal fee. The FAEs provide sample questions that can be anticipated on the respective exam and provide an explanation of the correct answers. There are also many study resources available commercially. We list many of these resources on our website, bcsp.org, but BCSP does not recommend one resource over another. For ethical and accreditation reasons, BCSP remains independent and unconnected to examination preparation and training. 
Another avenue of assistance you might consider is the BCSP Mentor Program. BCSP mentors are existing certificates who are willing to assist others in preparation for the examinations. A list of the mentors can also be found on the website. Finally, many local associations and organizations provide prep training as well. I hope the answers to these frequently asked questions have helped you to become more comfortable with the processes and procedures of the Board of Certified Safety Professionals. We are here to assist you Monday through Friday through our knowledgeable customer service department. If there are questions that are beyond the scope of customer service, those will be passed along to the appropriate party to help you with as well. ECSP is here to serve you and we wish you the very best with your examination experience. Okay, so um, that was a, a, a short little uh, presentation that does answer some of the questions that are, are um, they get asked quite a bit. So um, these are the nine domains that are in the blueprint that um, she was just speaking of. Um, not all nine are what we call weighted equally. So some of them will have more questions than others. For example, the, um, the advanced application of key safety concepts, that's very important, it's got a high weight. That has a lot more questions than the training and education and the law and ethics, um, the last two, for example. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you can see here a very wide range of knowledge and subjects are covered. So I talked earlier about having a plan. These are some of the, the um, components of the plan that I put together um, for my students. To understand and to test its contents, test taking strategies, um, review the exam content, practice testing, uh, feedback, and then we remediate. That means questions that you've missed, we've got to cover those so that you don't miss them when you take the, the final exam. And then the last thing is an updated study plan. When the course is over, your strengths and weaknesses are identified. Anything that you need to do during that last bit of time between the end of the course and when you take your um, CSP exam, that can help you um, inch your scores up to that 70% mark. Um, the process that, that Malvon and I have put together um, is way different than the traditional process. Um, if you can look anywhere online and you're gonna find um, those courses that the, the um, BCSP lady was talking about, um, and some of these are listed on their, their um, website. And you're going to get about 16 to 24 contact hours, whether it be online or at a live class. Um, online, it's almost always, I've not seen any live courses, it's almost always recorded. So you're going to sit down and you're going to watch videos, then you're going to answer questions. Um, and very, very typically, they give you one practice exam. And the, the price ranges that I looked up just a couple of weeks ago are here on your screen. Um, for, for that small amount, this is what you get. Process to Malavon and I have sat down and worked out between the two of us, and we've spent a lot of hours doing this. Um, you're going to get 40 contact hours minimum, and that's all live. That's talking to somebody so that when you have a question, you can answer it. You can ask it and it'll be answered right then and there. Um, we have an exam for every one of the nine domains. <clears throat> we also have a full practice exam, 200 questions, five hours. So it's just like you're taking the, um, the CSP exam or the ASP. Um, one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. So 
We're going to go through half of the course. We're going to evaluate where we're at. And then each of us is going to sit down. Each student and myself will um, meet on a Zoom one on one for 30 minutes and go over the strengths and the weaknesses and the plan on how to, to address that. Then again, at the end of the course, we'll have another 30 minute face-to-face -face, um, video session. And then in addition to that, after your final exam, I will put together a written individualized study program for you for that last little push up to your exam, okay? So that individualized study, study guide will help with any weaknesses that might remain um, when we get ready to go. Um, here's an example of uh, what you learn during one of our sessions. This is the outline for session one, which is math and science. And you can see what it involves. <clears throat> And the first two sessions are divided between math being session one, and then the science will be session two. During session one, we'll talk about algebra and certain parts of algebra you can see there on your screen. We'll talk about geometry, and we'll talk about statistics. Those are three areas of mathematics that a, a highly successful safety professional must be proficient at. Especially, we all know managers always want to hear these statistics, right? What are, our, what are our safety numbers? And raw numbers mean one thing, but being able to work on statistics and analyzing them to, so that you can speak intelligently about the trends and what your program is doing for the safety of your company is extremely important. Um, None of this math, the, the algebra and the geometry, none of them are really in depth. They're not going to be difficult. You, you will be able to do these. Um, and you can see in the geometry, uh, we talk about these a lot. We're talking, if we're talking about buildings and we need to know the area of buildings and especially volumes when we're talking about hazardous materials and uh, how much um, volume does a, a tank have if it's a certain height and a certain diameter? And how big does the bund or the secondary containment have to be? Those are some very important things. Um, it's a basic understanding. A lot of people already have these. We'll review those. Uh, and we will talk about how to use your calculators to get these, especially when we're talking about anything that's round. We're talking about uh, um, LNG tanks, the spheres, or just crude tanks, and they're round. We, we have to understand the use of squares and square roots on our calculators. Um, okay. So, for example, <clears throat> this, is, this is a question that used to be on one of the tests. This is one of our math questions. Given this set of data, these numbers, Somebody gives you these numbers, raw numbers. Okay, what is the mode? Okay, so the mode, we know the mode is the number that occurs in a set of numbers the most often. So here we can see out of all these numbers, some of them are on there once, some of them are on there twice. The number one is on there three times, so that's the mode. So that's, that's one of the statistical mathematical definitions that we need to know. Hold on. What type of data can be used with statistical procedures and is therefore the most useful to a safety professional? So this is a good example of one of those questions we talked about. A lot of these interval categorical data, these are useful but which one is the most useful? And that would be the ratio, okay? Because you can use ratios with any type of uh, statistic, stat, <clears throat> statistical procedures, excuse me. So um, understanding ratios, uh, which is just a percentage. Remember percentage just means per 100. 
So uh, out of a hundred times that someone does this, how many times will it be safe or unsafe? That sort of thing. So ratios are extremely important in safety. And that's one of the, the mathematical um, areas that we will look at. Another one, we all, this is something that if, if you've been involved in supervising of a, uh, a safety operation in, in any, any industry, you'll know that the number of incidents is really important. And if you have more than one department that you're covering, um, which obviously most industries have numerous departments, not only do they want to know for each, but they want to know the average. So let's just say you have uh, four departments and they report 19 incidents, 12 incidents, five incidents, and 22. What is the mean number of incidents? Okay, what does mean mean? We know that mode means which number occurs the most, but the mean, however, the the definition of mean is the average. So in this case, the average would be 14.5 or answer C. So again, you're starting to see the, um, the way that the CSP test is put together. Um, you see here, answer A, 58, that would have been all of them added together. <clears throat> so their total number of incidents was, was 58, but the average for each department, 14.5. So you can see they had a, one department that did really well, one department that did about average, and they had a couple of departments that need some work. Um, here's one of the science questions. I wanted to add this in here because that's part of the, that first domain. Which part of the middle ear equalizes the pressure between the middle and outer ear? Here we see four different parts of the ear. The um, correct answer would be B. Pistachian tube, again, a basic understanding of human anatomy is one of the parts of session two, which is our um, science, and that's part of domain one. The first of the nine domains will be covered in two sessions because math and science, um, again, they're, they're very different for one thing. And another is that there are a lot of questions on the exam. So we, we dedicate two sessions to that one domain. <clears throat> and then finally, here's the uh, physics question. There, some of these, again, they're going to be very basic. Which term is used to describe the motion of a body that's equal to its mass and velocity, okay? So if we're looking at equation, it would be X equals mass times velocity. And um, we should understand that is B, momentum. Um, one of the ways that to think of momentum as being important because it's both the mass and the velocity. So let's say you take something that's very light. Let's say you take a feather and you throw it at a piece of glass. The glass is very unlikely to break because it had, it had velocity, you flew the, through the feather very hard, but it didn't have any mass. So then you think, let's think of a heavy rock and let's lightly sit it on a pane of glass. It's got mass, but no velocity. That also will not break the glass. But if you take the rock and you throw it fast at the glass, the glass will shatter. That's momentum. That's mass time velocity. So those are the types of things that we have to understand and by using examples like that, that's going to provide some meaningful learning that you will remember and that you will um, keep that. You'll detain that knowledge for both the exam and for using um, <clears throat> throughout your career. So, um, Malvan, I have here, one of the ways that, that we can sign up uh, if for those people who are ready to move their careers on to the next level um, and are looking for a, a way to, to get a better job or to get promoted where they're at. Um, if you have any, um, I know that there are some other ways. You can also sign up 
with Malavana's steering gear training and through Malavana as well, if you want to address that. Sure, uh, Terry, um, I, uh, there are some questions, Terry. Uh, would it be all right if we cover the questions? Yes, yes. Yeah, we're, okay. we're very All ready right. for that now. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> they've been waiting for a while patiently. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Uh, I'll go one by one. Um, <clears throat> Pranav, he says he's not clear about the negative marking. Okay. Now, as I understand what you mean by negative marking, it means that sometimes they will ask you what the best answer, but at other times they will say which answer is not correct. And that's what that's that's and and yes, um, this this exam does have negative marking questions. They will ask you which one of these answers is wrong, and there will be three answers of the four that will be correct, and one of them will not not be correct. Okay, Pranav, does it answer your question? No, uh, I think uh, the negative marking, what, is, what does it mean that uh, whether if we suppose we answer any question wrongly, so are we going to the lose the marks or it will be like negative marking? Means some, suppose if we answer the 10 correct question, uh, 5 uh, wrong answers. So wrong answers will deduct any marks or not? No, 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 no. So um, there are, there are, uh, there are nine sections of the test and there are 200 questions. Now, you have to pass certain, you have to pass a certain number of the, the sections. So there's no number. You can't say you have to get 120 out of the 200 correct. It depends on where they're at, but um, you have to get a certain number if in, in each of the nine domains is, is how that it works. So, um, but the, the ones that you miss don't deduct the ones that you get right. When you get a question right, that counts as a correct answer um, on your score. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, Terry, are you, uh, let me see if I understood from a layman's point of view, from my point of view. So, even if he's expected to answer only six out of 10, let's say he answers 10 out of 10 and four are wrong. So he's not going to lose marks on the four. No, if you, if you, answer, if you answer six out of 10 and leave four blank, you get credit for six. If you answer six out of, if you answer 10 out of 10 and you get six correct and four incorrect, you still get six. So it's in your best interest to mark every question, even if it's a guess, because you may get it wrong, but a wrong answer does not count against you. Very good. Pranav, does that answer your question? Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't understand what you were asking, but yeah, that, that's, that's what that is. Yes, um, okay, let's go on to the next one. Uh, Murali uh, was asking regarding mathematics, will they give formulas in the question itself or will they provide the formula? Yeah, yes, they will provide the formulas. For example, yeah, if there's, there's a question about um, uh, a tank, it will say that the, the area of a tank is the height times the distance, um, the circumference, Squared, yes. Okay. Those formulas will be there for you. All right. Um, so we still have the question on the validity. I think probably we can provide them a bit later. And uh, there's an update from Santosh. It seems he has got an email from BCSP recently that is not allowed to take the computer uh, to the calculator to the exam room. And he's only allowed to use the desktop calculator. Hmm. I'm not sure. Who did he get that letter from? Was that Pearson? Uh, Santosh, uh, could you explain, please? Santosh? Santosh Kumar. Hi. Oh, yes, Santosh. Please go ahead. Uh, just I received email from BCSP. Mentioned that to ensure the integrity of our certification exams, 
and the exceptional value of our credential pcsp will be limiting calculator used during the examination to the on screen scientific calculator beginning monday may 18 2020 Okay, did they may be talking about a specific brand? They're very specific about which calculators you can use, but if oh, no. if you would at, at if you would forward that email to Malavon and or myself, I'll okay, be able sure. to answer that. I'll respond to that. No no problem. Because no problem. I've, no. I've never heard of them limiting no, no, that's something that I've not seen before. No, it's been declared about a couple of weeks ago. Okay, please okay. forward that email to uh, me so I can even the dark uh, investigate that for you. Yeah, no problem, no problem. That I will send you. Okay, sure. Thank you and very I, much, Santosh. Then I can call the people at BCSP and find out what that's about. Okay, sure. sure. That, that doesn't sure. make any sense to me. <laughs> sure. Uh, next, uh, from Suman. Uh, three years back. That's a question. Three years bachelor's and post graduation will be admitted. So I I did reply yes. Sure. As long as it again, I can't say for sure because I don't I don't have the lists that they have. Again, there's literally thousands of universities across the globe that are accredited. So if that was a nationally accredited bachelor's program then it should but again the only way to know that for sure is to um to have your your um credentials examined by BCSP and i i wish i had a better answer but nobody can answer that except them okay uh, uh, to just continue on the same question terry uh, would it be possible for you to share your screen on the list of approved certifications Yeah, I can do that. Yes, you can just okay. go over uh, one by one. Yeah, um, while you guys go ahead and answer the next question, while I pull that up. Okay, sit mandatory. Uh, there was another question. Yeah, can you sit at any time? As the it's about okay, is there a specific date or is it like like knee bosh, whether it's quarterly or half yearly? uh um, i answer that question that you can sit for the exam whenever you want but that's a you need to take an appointment with the local exam center the peers and exam center and if i remember correctly i think info center is one of those examination centers so once you approach them then they will give you an appointment and uh, then at that specific date and time you can appear for the exam okay That is that is correct. So um you have one year from the date on the letter once they have looked at you once the BCSP has looked at your credentials and determined that you're eligible they will send you a hard copy letter. Um and there will be a date on that letter. <clears throat> there will be one year um for you to call Pearson View and schedule your exam and take it through Pearson View and then Pearson View um, will tell you as you're leaving whether or not you passed if you passed they will give you a letter that said that you have passed and that you will be receiving your certificate through the mail you get a certificate and um you also get some things you get some like this that you get to put you can wear it on your lapel and uh you'll get a, a a card that you can keep in your wallet but uh, yeah one you have one year to do that um terry i just shared a file with them which is the pearson view brochure that should give you more uh, information about the examination i've just uh, sent you on the same chat so once you receive in a few seconds you can download the file uh, okay So I'm sharing my screen now. <clears throat> Everyone should see a um a list of the approved credentials. I'll I'll go through these real quickly. The first one is the member 
of Institute of Safety Professionals of Nigeria, the MISPN. <clears throat> There's the ASP, which we've talked about. There's a GSP. Um, some of you may, if you're more involved in hazardous materials, may hold the Certified Industrial Hygienist, CIH. Um, I know that there are a lot of people out there that hold the um, CMIOSH or the Charter of the Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. Um, there's the Canadian Registered Safety Professional. There is the ACRC, which is a um, American military. There is the, the Singapore um, Institute of Safety Officers. Um, another one that, that uh, I see a lot of is the, the NIBOSH International Diploma on Occupational Health and Safety. <clears throat> um, there is the, um, the India um, Diploma or cert Certificate of Industrial Safety. <clears throat> There is the um, PRC from China, which is a certified safety engineer. Um, and then there is the, um, the Master in Occupational Safety and Health International Training Center as well. So those are the, um, the list. If you, have, if you have one of those and your degree and your four years experience, then you will get the letter saying that you can be seated for the CSP. If you do not have one of those, but you do have the degree and you do have the, um, the four years, then you can be seated for the ASP. Then as you take the ASP, as soon as you get your letter saying that you passed it, you can then go back online and apply for the CSP exam. Um, and so, again, it's just one additional step. Uh, Terry, I've also shared the file which you actually sent me a few days ago on the list of approved programs, approved certifications. Okay. So I'll share yeah, the PDF have, with everybody. Yeah, they, that, they do have uh, what's called the GTE program. Yes. They've added some, uh, they're basically one-year programs um, that cover the, the same thing as most of these uh, sort of certifications that are required. Any other questions? Uh, please feel free to ask your questions. I'll leave, I'll leave this up there for, for a little bit. Uh, uh, Terry, Mayank has uh, asked a very, very interesting question. Okay. <laughs> His question is, which certificate has got more advantage, uh, whether NIBOSH or CSP? That's good. I think Mayank is trying to get us into trouble. I, I really don't have an answer for that. Um, it, a lot of it depends. Jerry, are you there? I'm here. So yes, can can you can you hear me, Mala? Yeah. Would you like me to repeat the question? You have to do like this. Okay. Okay. So I think the question was which was more important. The knee box uh, or the uh, CSP? Uh, <laughs> papa, Papa, <laughs> how do I do it? <laughs> I'm sorry, what's that? Malavon, can you uh, mute <laughs> one of our participants? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, yeah, the, some of the, uh, the fun from working at home, right? So, uh, I, I say that one would be more important than the other. Um, you can get the NIBOSH without the CSP. And you can get the CSP without having the NIBOSH, but you have to have one of the others instead. Um, 
it's really going to be up to an individual employer as to which that they put more emphasis on. There may be one company that you're trying to get hired at or that you're trying to get promoted at that really thinks that the NIBOSH is more important. There may be another that thinks that CSP. Um, I don't think that you can say that one is more difficult to get than the other. I don't think that you can say that one makes you a better safety professional than the other. Um, it really is personal preference. Okay. Uh, Terry, since the bandwidth was dropping, I've asked everyone to disable their videos. Uh, I think some of them are unable to hear. Thank you. Um, are you able to, to, to post an answer to a question on the chat for everyone to see? Okay, okay. Yes, it, uh, to the participants, please feel free to ask your questions because we're getting closer to the finishing time. Okay, so I, I went ahead, Malavan, and posted that so everyone can see it. Okay, how much time will it take uh, to complete the CSP, um, pro the course, if our engineering degree is verified? I'm sorry, would you repeat that? Yeah, yeah. the question is from uh, Mohammed Khan, Jafar Khan. How much time will it take to complete the CSP examination? and the course if our engineering degree is verified? <clears throat> well, that's gonna be up to each individual. As soon as you get your letter, you can, it, you can um, go ahead and make your appointment to take the test. I mean, if, if uh, Pearson View has time the next day, you can go and take it the next day. Um, I, I don't recommend, I, I recommend taking some time and, and studying. Um, which is why uh, Malavan and I offer this course because, again, as many as 50% of people are not successful the first time they take this because, and those people that do that are the ones that don't prepare. So um, I think that if you're going to put the time and effort in to uh, attempting to become a CSP, that it's extremely important that you take the, put that extra time and effort into um, really getting into a good study course. And I'm, I'm very confident that, that we offer that. Um, we, have, we have things in our course that nobody else um, is doing for their safety professionals. The next question we have, Terry, is, is it required to pass 70% in all domains? They, <laughs> I, w I wish I could answer you that. Um, it, it's not in all domains. The way that they run it is an average of the domains. So, um, and it's not always 70%. Um, the, the, if you ask them, they're going to tell you it's somewhere between 59 and 62% is what it takes to pass. It just depends on if you miss, if you miss, you can miss more questions in the big domain. So one domain might have 40 questions while another one has 12 questions. Um, <clears throat> so, but uh, it, it's, it's not 70%. Um, what I try to do is get everyone up to 70%. Because if you can get 70% in each domain, I know that when you go to Pearson View to sit down and take your test, you're going to pass. So I set my, my bar a little higher than CSP um, so that I know that, that my students are going to pass when they go to take it. But uh, the overall, for all 200 questions, depending on 
where you miss the questions in each domain is somewhere between 59 and 62 percent. That's the numbers that BCSP will give you um, when if if you ask them what the passing is. Terry, the next question. Uh, that's another diploma program which is similar to the NIBOSH diploma. That's from the British Safety Council and it's a level six program. And uh, Suman is asking whether that diploma would be considered for CSP. Um, I, it's not on the 12. I don't know. It, it might be in that GET list. Um, of supplemental programs that they they take um, that one I'm not as familiar with I'd have to look at that but um, to, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking some notes here so I know that we've got one email forward coming from one of our questions on the calculator so um, I will check on the um, IVIP level six and see if that's on their GET list or not. Okay. And um, who's that from? Uh, that's okay. from Suman. Okay, so um, when we we check that out, we can get an email. Very and, true. Um, see, see what, what, Terry, what I noticed in the Middle East. Uh, they have one of these three diplomas. Predominantly, it's NIBOSH diploma. And uh, some of them have the British Safety Council uh, diploma. It's a, it's, again, it's level six. And then you have the NVQ, National Vocation Qualifications, again from UK. So it's possible that many of them have one of these, the, one of these three diplomas. Okay. So what we can do is, is I will check that list. And that's something that's new within the last year. So I'll check that out and we can just, we can send a blanket email out to all participants. Okay, that's, that's very good. Are there any other questions? So I do see a question, what is the next level of CSP? The CSP <laughs> is the highest level that Board of Certified Safety Professionals has. That's their highest one. There's nothing above that. Sajid, sorry to disappoint you, man. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking forward to something more than that. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, uh, if there are no other questions, Terry, um, can, can I share some of the pointers? Yes, please. Yes. See, uh, the, what we have done is, Terry has actually compiled a very detailed brochure, which I can email to everybody or, or who's come on the webinar today. Uh, go through each and every section. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of questions. So I have a local number. I'm based in Qatar. So you can either call me, just text me and then call me, or just send me an email. And then we can immediately address those questions. In the brochure, you will have information about uh, the fees. I'm not sure, sure about the validity, but it will have information about the fees. It also includes a schedule of how the workshop is going to be delivered. Have a look at them. And I'm sure, uh, even though I prepared it, like sometimes like uh, you have to read it once or, uh, more than once to understand it better. Okay, and even uh, some of the PDF files, I think uh, somebody said, okay, they have not, uh, they are unable to download the file. So whatever that we discussed today, I'm going to share, share those files. And I will also provide a link uh, for today's uh, video. So even in the future, let's say you want to download it and, you know, literally watch it. Okay. Um, are we okay to wind up, Terry? I, I believe so. Just um, a reminder that the registration should be completed by um, 1 July. Yes, for the course, yes. Then we'll have an orientation on 10 July and get started after that. And um, the sooner the better um, because you will get a, 
a large amount of, of information when you register and you can actually get started um, studying at that point and you can get um, get registered for your Canvas account and your Poll Everywhere account and, and um, get ready to end. Excellent. Thank you very much, Terry. Thank you for, to all the participants who joined us today. Um, I'm sorry, towards the end, the bandwidth kept dropping and we were unable to view everyone. Uh, having said, we really enjoyed uh, your questions. Even if once the session is over, if you have questions, just send to us. Everyone's, I think everyone's, everyone who's received my email mm -hmm. would have my mobile number. Just send me a message, then we can address it accordingly. Thank you very much. Thank you so much here for joining us. Um, and my, my contact information is in the packet as well. Um, you can text me on WhatsApp and you can email me. <clears throat> Be careful about when you call me because um, at some point during your evening is the middle of the night where I'm at. So I may not answer. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Terry, Ahmed uh, Idrisi is with us. So once everybody log off, then we can have a private chat with Ahmed. Okay, very good.